Well, more now on Australia's peacekeeping mission to the Solomon Islands, with dozens of Defence Force personnel and police being deployed amid mounting unrest. To discuss, we're joined by Defence Minister Peter Dutton and Deputy Opposition Leader Richard Miles in Canberra. Nice to see you both this morning. Pete, yeah. can we just uh, unpack this a little bit? What will our personnel be doing on the ground and how long will they be there for? Uh, well, Elliot, obviously there's a, a, a plane that's left last night from Canberra uh, that had 23 AFP officers on board and they'll assist uh, the local police in restoring order. There are also a number of uh, foreign affairs staff on that plane and today uh, there will be additional Australian Federal Police officers as well as uh, defence personnel from Townsville, so from the 3rd Brigade, 6th Brigade and 17th Brigade and they will provide support uh, in terms of uh, you know restoration of that uh, public order and whatever other taskings uh, they're allocated and they also have uh, the ability to provide a medical response uh, so that's that operation is underway now uh, but it's a significant contribution and it follows the request uh, from uh, the government uh, in Honiara. Seems pretty chaotic on the ground. We spoke to a journalist uh, just in the last mm -hmm. hour, Pete, um, who said um, it's it's not really being well organised. Um, so it, it it is potentially a dangerous situation uh, for our police and troops. It's certainly a dangerous situation on the ground, and we've seen uh, the rioting that's taken place, uh, the arson, and uh, the general disorder that's there at the moment as well. So there's uh, a lot of work for the police to do on the ground, but there's also uh, a presence of uh, police and Australian Federal Police and Defence personnel already in country. So they will provide a very quick picture for uh, the newly arrived officers and they will be the tactical response group uh, with uh, significant capability. And it is a dangerous situation, there's no question. Richard, the violence is of huge concern. Uh, yeah, it is. But uh, uh, the government's doing the right thing in responding to the request from Prime Minister Sogavare for Australian help here. And uh, Solomon Islands is a, is a place I've been to a number of times. And uh, I think this is going to give the people of Solomon Islands an, a lot of confidence. Uh, people remember that between 2003 and 2017, the regional assistance mission in Solomon Islands, which Australia led, uh, settled uh, troubles that were there back in 2003. And that's well remembered in the country. Uh, there, there is an enormous amount of goodwill towards the assistance that Australia provided there then and the kind of assistance that Australia can provide now. Um, so I think this, is, uh, this will make a difference uh, and, and this will be a great thing that these people are doing and I, you know, I have enormous confidence in our, the men and women of both our police force and our, our defence forces. But it, it is a dangerous situation. Um, you know, they, they are putting themselves in, in harm's way but I have no doubt they're going to make a difference. Well, we wish them, uh, our troops all the very best over there and our police force. They do a terrific job. Welcome back to the show. More now on Australia. Australia is sending more than 100 troops and police to the Solomon Islands after protests and rioting broke out in the capital. Demonstrators have attempted to storm the parliament and topple the nation's prime minister. Joining us now from the Solomon Islands is journalist Georgina Kakia. Good morning to you, Georgina, and thank you so much for your time. Can you just give us a sense of what's happening there right now? Yes, um, I think... If you follow um, Solomon Islands on Twitter, you, you, you and also on uh, some most, most of the news channels now have been carrying stories from Solomon Islands, you might see the uh, disturbances that's occurring in Honiara. Uh, we've had a, um, a lockdown order issued by the Prime Minister like 36 hours ago, uh, but prior to that, it was because of protesters that uh, disrupted the. Uh, uh, Honiara City, especially with the calls for the Prime Minister, demanding the Prime Minister to step down. That was uh, last yesterday. And then yesterday, things escalated and a lot of uh, shops and buildings were looted and went down. So basically, as a result from the protest that started uh, the other day ago, that's what's happening in Honiara, especially the eastern side of Honiara. Yeah. Georgina, I wonder, um, is there any organisation to it or is it just uh, more chaotic? And what difference will um, Australian troops going in there make on the streets, on the ground? Mm, I think it's uh, very chaotic um, from what we've seen yesterday. But having as, um, assistance from Australia will help because the uh, local police force are really are not in a position to uh, uh, take control of the situation because the crowd is a bit too much. 
uh, but they've managed to stand at strategic points, which has um, enabled the um, CBD to be uh, safe. So uh, it's the eastern side uh, from central Honiara going east, mm -hmm. uh, which are quite, um, uh, you know, down by the um, uh, people that went down the buildings and all those stuff. But otherwise, for the CBD, it's still OK, because the police were able to control uh, the crowd from not coming into the uh, central part of Honiara as well as into the western side. So uh, Do... I think we need support uh, with numbers. Yeah. Well, we certainly hope uh, it helps. Um, like, we know this sort of started as, as a very peaceful um, political protest at the start. There's talk now that criminal elements have got involved. Can you just explain to us what is driving the tensions? Hmm. Basically, uh, the protesting was um, from a majority, a, a popula uh, populated group in Solomon Islands, um, um, Malaita, and they've had this long ongoing issues which they felt that the government has not listened to their voices. So that was what um, stemmed the protest, and then uh, it all got out of control. But otherwise, it's just the people feeling that their needs and um, are not being heard by the national government. It started not only uh, when um, the switch was made between uh, from Sol uh, by Solomon Islands from uh, Taiwan to China, but uh, there were long underlying issues which they felt. Uh, the government has not really prioritized what what they want and what they need especially for the development of the province so it's an ongoing um a uh, lot of issues that culminated to what we see now happening in honiara these past few days georgina do you feel um, the people who are, who are closer to the rioting do they feel in danger i think most of honiara residents that um most are feeling especially uh not safe um, along the streets, main road. You will see if you come into Honiara now, because the airport is on the eastern side. So if you come through Honiara from the eastern side, it will be such a sad um, state to see because most of the buildings are now burned down to the oh. ground. Mm -hmm. And yep, including Chinatown has been looted. All, all the buildings have been burned down as well. Um, so that's the case, um, okay. like for Solomon Islands, uh, Honiara especially, and some of the mothers that came um, to the market were not able to go back to their homes as well um, especially they live in rural um, rural canal and i've spoken to a few of them yesterday so th that's what's happening and they're okay. scared okay. they're just taking cover at the main market so they we hope that some help will come to them especially uh, we must thank the groups of red cross and other organizations that are helping all us. right um yeah. georgina we wish you all the very best and um, a piece um you know, rain there as soon as our troops get there, the quicker the better. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time.